Yo, yo, yo. Good morning, YouTube. It's your boy CJ, your home improvement homeboy. Y'all already know what we got going on today. So, got a new client, new accent wall. I'm excited to get into this one. Had to make a quick trip to Lowe's. Y'all know I'm loyal to the orange people, but it's blue people today because it was convenient. So, yeah, got to grab a paint roller. So, with this wall, this um, particular wall, we are doing we are painting the other walls around it and we're doing this design right here, right there, the one that just popped up, yeah, that one. Um, anyways, yeah, we're doing that on the focal point wall. So let's get to it. So I'm on site, about to get started. I see I've done all the prep work already, brought all the tools in. Man, see, this is why I love Milwaukee. Look at this. I've done two jobs without charging this battery and it's still fully charged. Shoot, more than that, really. So I got the frame done. Um, it was a little fighting because the drywall is always uneven, especially in the corners. But as you see, it's just a little patchwork just to get it looking smooth and like one piece, but nothing too major. All right, let's get into the build. So because I'm freestyling this particular design, in order to get my spacing, because I want everything to be evenly spaced apart. So whatever spacing the first two pieces are apart is the same spacing that all the rest of them will be apart. So I kind of got to visually eye it to kind of see what's going to look aesthetically pleasing. And then I start to do my spacing. So just in case you guys are wondering, no, I'm not working on blueprints this time around. But you do got to kind of have somewhat of an eye for it and just to know you know what looks good because you don't want this piece of the slats too close together and you don't want them too far apart because it's just it's not going to look good it has to have a good balance and you know it's good <laughs> you hear me say a lot you cannot account for drywall so when they were finishing the drywall boom Nice little gap right there. Shows you it's not flush, but it's cool. That's why we nail diagonally. All right, so now let's find our distance. We're at 18 and three quarters.
for those of you that saw that part and were trying to figure out what I was doing, there was a little bit bigger of a gap here than what I wanted it to be. And so I just took and cut a very small shim and slid it in. And that makes it easier when I go to wood fill it. I don't have to put so much filler or bondo or whatever in there. So now we gotta do our measurements to see exactly where the rest of the pieces will fit. Remember, there needs to be an 18 and 3 quarter inch spacing between each slab. 18 and 3 quarters. We got the top of the slab here. And so we're gonna measure from where the top of that slab would be because now we know where the next 18 and 3 quarters. So from, oh, we gotta add an inch and a quarter. So from 18 and three quarters, so that would be 20. 20 is where the next top should be. Right, and just like that, the build portion of the accent wall is done. So now I can focus on the finish up, the touch ups and finish ups. So next you'll see, for those of you who are new to my channel and this is your first time seeing the process, next thing we gotta do is fill in the holes um, and the lines. We wanna give it that kind of smooth, seamless look. And then the final step, well not final, ooh. The next step after that is going to be caulking the gaps between the wall and the boards. That gives it that seamless look as well. Um, it makes it look like it was built, like the wall was built like that, like it's all one panel as opposed to several different pieces. So after we caulk it, then we get the paint. And now you start to see it really come to life and change the whole dynamic of the room. So let's get to my favorite part. I lied, the build is my favorite part. I love it all, it's just what I do. It occurred to me that I rarely show you guys the up close and personal when it comes to wood filling and filling the nail holes. So here it is. You just wanna mash it in. So for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna record every single hole that I'm filling, but you gotta see kinda how it's supposed to look before I get to scraping it smooth and sanding it off. So you just want to scrape it gently with the five in one. This is not a rough scraping process. You're just trying to get all of that extra texture off the face of it. Cause that means less sanding you'll have to do. Same thing on all sides. Everywhere where you put wood filler, I don't think I put it down here because it's the bottom. And now we sand lightly in a circular motion. it across rub across it it should be nice and smooth you shouldn't feel any excess texture 
Now, if you do feel anything, I would recommend just get your sander and go over it again until you no longer feel it. feel. Y'all already know what time it is. Cop time. Oh, the camera's too low. Alright, now you have to see. I love talking. Goes way faster than sand and feeling. I'll tell you that. Yo, so this color is called Needle Point Navy. It is a Sherwin Williams color. And man, when I tell you, look at this. 
Look at it shine. Look at it shine. Nice even coating. Yeah, I can't wait to show y'all the finished product. We just getting started. Next, we gotta paint the other walls around it. So we at the barn part of the job, which is waiting for paint to dry. So in the meantime, we'll go ahead and start coat, um, what is it called? Cutting around the edges and taking off the outlet covers, outlets, etc. So then go ahead and prep to paint the surrounding walls because this is a full paint job. So I'm excited to see how everything turns out. gloss coat over the top face of the slats so this stuff sets it off like this is what really gives it that pop that extra shine now y'all know my secret 